Well, here it is. The candle is lit and it's burning brightly and it's got a really nice pattern from the uh, Pierce 10 here. Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, I want to show you how to make a Pierce 10 candle lantern from an old tin can. Stay tuned. To do this project, you're going to need a few simple tools and just a few household items. First thing you're going to need is a piece of wood that is a proper diameter that will fit inside of the can. You're going to need a file to smooth down the rough edges. You're going to need a candle. This is just a cheap taper candle I bought at Walmart. You need a hammer, some form of tin snips, wire clothes hanger, a sharpie or something to mark on the metal with, a 16 penny nail or any large nail will do as long as it has a sharp point, a flathead screwdriver, you're going to cut a small star or whatever shape you prefer out of a piece of cardboard, a small cardboard spacer, and then just two regular cans with the labels removed. So the first thing you want to do is you want to take your little cardboard marker and this is about a finger width. So just kind of judge it by your own design, what you want. And taking the Sharpie, we're just going to make a mark on either side to begin, and then just space all the way around, just like this at the bottom. We're going to go all the way around the bottom, and then we're going to do the top the same way and we have them all marked all the way around. Next, we take our simple star, and I just opted for a four-point star, and I'm gonna start here about in the center, and you can kind of gauge by the ribs what's the center. I have about two ribs above and two ribs below, and then I'm just going to center this, and I'm gonna just make some marks, and this is, takes a little bit of doing, but you'll get the hang of it. And again, it doesn't have to be perfect, but the neater that you can make it, the better off your project is going to look when you're done. And you can finish it up a little bit better if you wish, make it look a little sharper. But again, it's not super critical. Okay, so there we have one star marked. Now we're going to go over here, we're gonna separate it the way my star is marked, and you'll have to figure out the spacing for yourself, but just about a quarter inch difference between the two stars is plenty for me to go all the way around. I'm gonna do that and I'll get back with you. I've got all of my stars marked all the way around. And now I'm going to take, and I want to put two dots in the middle. And all of these are going to be pierced. And again, it's just a guesstimate, it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so I like that. And then I'm going to put some vertical lines here and here on each side of the star arms, all the way around, just like that. And then one more thing, I'm going to put six dots in the center, and I'm gonna separate them by one rib. So one, two, three, and then one, two, three. I'm gonna do that all the way around as well. So there you can see how we have it all marked. Dots around the bottom, stars in the middle, vertical lines, dots between the stars, and it looks just like this. Next, we're gonna take our log that is sized to fit the tin can, and we slide it on. Now, the first holes that we wanna punch are the ones down here at the bottom, okay? So right here along the bottom. And the reason we're gonna do that is because when we put the hole in for the candle, we can't get the can all the way onto the piece of wood. Now make sure it's a little loose. You want it super tight because if you do, when you start to pierce this, it's going to poke the tin to the inside and it's going to make it hard to get off and so we don't want that. So all you do is you take the hammer and you find your place where you want to punch and we put a hole. We're going to do that all the way around and we're going to do that to all of the places where the circles are. We're also going to punch out each one of the star shapes. Okay, and you can see what we have there. Got all of our 
holes punched in the bottom and the top of the can. Next we want to start on our star shapes and this can be a little tricky so I encourage you to take your time. You'll find it much easier to punch in between the ribs but sometimes you have to go on top of the ribs and do that just just take your time and go carefully and if you mess up and you don't get it perfect uh, don't worry about it again it's just a tin can worst case scenario you can get another one but sometimes you have to brace it a little bit with your finger if it's in a rib and uh, kind of tap it a little bit to get it started there we go and uh, try to make sure and get the points really good of the star because I want them to define the shape. All right, I'm going to keep going around here and uh, then when I get that done, we'll show you the next step. I went ahead and punched all of the round holes, the two in the middle of the stars, uh, all of these six in between here, all the way around. Next, we need to punch these holes here, the slots. And for that, I'm just going to use a small flathead screwdriver. Tin is very soft. This is quite easy to do. And all we do is we place it on the line that we made and give it a sharp wrap like this. And that will punch through the tin. And we do that to all the flat spots all the way around. Next, we need to make the hole in the bottom of the can for the candle to stick into. And how we do that is we're just going to take and mark a cross, just like that, it doesn't have to be pretty, but just inside this first circle. Then we take our flathead screwdriver and we do the same thing we did on the sides. And I like to start in the middle and we just punch out each one of these all the way to the end. All right, so there we have it, and we've got this. It's either a cross or an X, depending on how you look at it. Now we remove the can. You're gonna have to wiggle a little bit because it's been compressed and nailed a little bit into the wood here. And we need to bend these upward. Now, you can use gloves to do this or the screwdriver, just be really careful because uh, you don't wanna hurt yourself. But just take the screwdriver and start pushing these in like this. Again, being very careful because it has some sharp edges. And you can use the hammer handle hand, uh, or the, the head of the screwdriver, whatever you wish, uh, whatever makes it easy for you. Just be careful. All right, so once we kind of get that open like this, then we can very carefully take the fingers. Now we don't want to bend these back too far. We want it to be able to catch and hold the candle when we put it in there so it'll go in but it won't slip out and fall out on the ground. Next we need to add the bail handle and so we find a place that's got a hole in it about where we want and we want to go across to an opposite hole making sure with the nail that we're pretty well centered in the can. That's, that's pretty important. And then you can wiggle this hole out a little bit on each side and you may wish to take some pliers. I use my multi-tool and crimp down any sharp edges because uh, again we're piercing the tin to the inside for the most part so that it stays nice and smooth and doesn't catch on anything. Next we're going to take our wire clothes hanger and we're going to cut it about in the middle. So right there and then right past this curve where the hook is because we only are going to need just the one side here. So we'll go ahead and cut that and we'll lay this aside. Now we have a piece of wire. It's half a hanger and we'll want to take and straighten this out. You can do this with your hands and uh, the more you work this the better you get at it. But uh, you can get it pretty straight. Uh, but I do find that a pair of pliers and again, I always have my multi-tool on me, but uh, you can get it pretty good, pretty straight without a whole lot of work. And so we have just a piece of wire like this. All right, the next thing we want to do is take the pliers and grab it by the end. And we're going to put a small hook just like this in one side. Now this hook goes into this large hole that we made on this side. And you may have to fiddle with it a little bit to get it to fit, and that's all right. Get it in there, just like that. All right, 
Now you've seen me do this on another video, so I'm not going to belabor the point. Um, it's in my uh, bush pot video that I make from a tin can, and I'll try to remember to put a link for it up here. But then you want to take and you want to bend it, like I showed you in that video, like this, and then on around the bottom of the can, keeping this straight up and down, like this. You don't want that to be crooked. Bend this around using that curve as a template for your handle. to get all the way around until we are opposite of the hole that we want to use. And then, just using our finger strength, we're going to put a thumb about right where we want to bend it, and we're going to pull up like this. And what we've done is we've formed a curve that will set around the can. And again, you may have to fiddle with this a little bit and pinch it, and uh, just the more you work with this wire, the softer it gets, and so you can get this to bend pretty good for you until it fits pretty well around that can. All right, now, the hole that we're going to use is right here, and we don't need this much wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to clip off the top of this right close to the top of the can, okay, like that. And then, knowing where this hole is that we're going to use, we're going to take the pliers, and we're going to put a bend in it, and we're going to put it through the hole that we want, just like this. It's got a little bit of wire sticking out, and then we'll take the pliers, and we'll crimp that down. All right, just like that. And now we have a bail handle that can open and close freely. And again, you can come back afterwards and you can reshape this and get this to be a more perfect curve. The nice thing about this type of handle is not only does it nest, but of course it centers itself perfectly without any extra effort. But there we have our bail handle. All right, now we need to make the top, the cover that goes on here. To make the top, we're just going to take another can, and if it has a seam, locate where that seam is, because we don't want the seam. And then we're just gonna cut it in half, just very simply, all the way down, go to the other side, and do that again. And then, once we get that cut in half, we're gonna cut one of these sides off. Now that we have this can cut off, and this piece cut for us for the top, we want to make sure that it will fit inside of the can. So obviously this is much too wide. The bail handle won't work with the lid on. So using these ribs, I'm going to gauge, I'm going to cut it about right here, cut this off. All right, and there we have a bit of a hood. Now, we've got some sharp edges on here. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take your file and you're going to just very carefully, and this is very soft metal, this tin is, so it's not hard to do. But you want to smooth down all of these edges, and if you can, go ahead and snip off and round these corners. Now you'll have a piece that looks like this. It's got some rounded corners, so it doesn't have a whole lot of sharp edges on it anymore, and that's good. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this, and we're going to bend it a little bit around this hammer handle. And we want to do that because we we don't want to get a really sharp crease if we can help it, but we do want it to be a little more flexible in the center. It's going to help it fit better. All right, until so we have something that looks like this, a little more rounded, but with no definite creases in it. And then you can open this up or close this as needed, because what we're going to do is we can take the top here, knowing where our bail handle is, and you're going to put the sides toward the bail handle, and we're just going to pinch this, and it's going to slide inside. It's going to be held in place by friction. And what that does, this is a hood to keep the heat from the candle from coming up and burning your fingers as you carry it around. And then, of course, for storage, you just put it inside until you're ready to use it. All right, how about fitting the candle? How do we go about that? Go ahead and remove the plastic from the candle. Now, this candle is obviously too long for what we need. Uh, our can is uh, way too big, but we'll see that it will fit uh, inside here. Now, if this is too loose, as this one is almost too loose for this, what I'm going to do is I can reach down inside here with my hammer handle or something, and I can adjust those ears right here. I can pull those back out. I don't want to just use my fingers because they're kind of sharp, but you can bend this in and out to some degree to adjust the tension on the tapered candle. And again, you can use a screwdriver, you can use your hammer handle, uh, whatever else you need, but if, if you see that it's, that it's uh, 
just not quite what you need it to be. Now see, I've moved that in some, and uh, I think that's gonna work pretty good. You can kind of see that there. And I'm gonna test fit my candle. Oh yeah, that's a good fit. That's nice and tight. Okay, now this is obviously too tall. I do want some sticking out the bottom so I can feed it as it burns down. I can push it up more, but it's still too tall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this candle and about an inch from the top, I'm just gonna break it, just like this. And uh, it's not gonna hurt anything. And as a matter of fact, if you wiggle it a little bit, you can probably get some of that wick up right here and then we'll just cut that off. All right, just like that. And now we have a little bit of our wick sticking up. And by the way, this size of a candle here is really good for the Civil War candle design that I showed you. And uh, I'll make sure and put a link to it up here as well. Now there's a couple ways that you can load this. Uh, to make it work for you. You can either light the candle first and then insert it in the bottom or what I like to do is I like to get it to about the proper height, about an inch or so from the top, leaving the taper hanging out the bottom so I can feed it. Make sure that this is straight and then taking a match or a lighter, just light the flame. Once we have the flame going, then we take our little hood and we make sure that it's sideways to the bail handle. We don't want to put it down too far, but enough, of course, that it can have some tension. Now remember, this is going to heat up really quick. All right, and there we have our candle inside of a nice little pierced tin lantern. Uh, the wind can't blow it out easily. And of course, as it burns down, you're just going to push this up and you're just going to feed it from the bottom like that. So this little type of pierced tin candle lantern is just a homemade version of the Revolutionary War style pierced tin candle lantern. This would be the kind of course that Paul Revere used on his famous ride. But you can make one for yourself that it packs easy and uh, makes a great addition to your bushcraft pack. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below. And while you're down there, you'll find our Patreon link. This is where you can donate to financially support the channel. And a great big thank you to all of our patrons. If you want to support the channel in other ways, you'll also find our spring link, which is where you can buy great Waypoint Survival branded merchandise like this sweatshirt. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure and press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time. <music>